Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Hola, ¿cómo estás? My name is Romina and I'm your Spanish teacher for today's lesson. En la clase de hoy vamos a estudiar las categorías gramaticales en español. This lesson is meant to be a very quick and short explanation about grammatical categories. So we are going, we are going to go through what's a grammatical category, how many do we have in Spanish, and a very quick um, explanation of each one of these categories. Um, we do have subcategories, so um, each one of these categories can be classified at the same time in more categories. Um, and uh, the thing obviously is that these categories can go on forever and this video will be way too long. Uh, so this is just a very short introduction. So let's start. What is a grammatical category? Um, it's basically a classification of words, okay? So every single word existing in Spanish is classified according to their meaning or their role, their function in a sentence, okay? Um, so traditionally speaking in Spanish, we have nine categories. And this is a very hot potato topic because um, obviously there are many theories out there and uh, there are lots of different classifications, okay? Um, but in this video, we're just gonna focus on the traditional ones um, because I'm sure you're gonna go, you're going to listen, you're gonna hear these names. And uh, when you get to learn more Spanish and if you're interested in grammar, you can learn about new ways of classif classifying classifying the words in Spanish, but I think this is a good start. It might not be the best or the most accurate, but I think it, it's, it's a good introduction. So as I said before, we have nine kinds of words in Spanish, right? So we have sustantivos, nouns, adjetivo, adjectives, artículo, article, pronombre, pronouns, verbo, verbs, adverbio, adverbs, preposición, preposition, conjunción. Um, I think these are called conjunctions, like uh, connecting words, nexus, interjections, interjección, okay? And that's the last one, interjección. So all words in Spanish are classified between these nine words, uh, nine categories. So let's start with some examples of sustantivos. On screen we have casa, Bogotá, belleza, países, gato. So as you can see, um, uh, uh, nouns are words that um, describe a large spectrum of things, right? Because pretty much they describe everything. Um, usually we would say in Spanish that they describe things that have um, life or no, or no life. They're, they're inert, right? Um, so, you know, it can be pretty much anything. Um, a thing, a person, an animal, an idea, okay, something abstract like an idea, um, a feeling, okay, those are nouns, those are sustantivos. Um, so the interesting thing about nouns is that these are words that are variable, okay, they change, and they change depending um, on their number and gender. Obviously not all nouns change, we definitely have exceptions, um, but um, usually nouns are words that change, okay? Uh, you can see, for example, here, casa, casa is female and singular. So, as I said before, the classification of nouns, uh, because there are so many of them, um, the classification can be very extensive, like uh, you can classify them between concrete, like they actually exist, or they're abstract, or they're general, like they're referring, referring to a whole species or to a one particular thing, like a, someone's name or a city's name or something like that. Um, 
So obviously the, the classification is very big because nouns are just very broad. Okay, so we continue with adjetivos. Here we have some examples of adjetivos. Gato mimoso. Casa grande. Mi hermano. Estos libros. So mimoso, grande, mi, estos um, are adjetivos. And uh, you can recognize them because they go alongside with the um, uh, with the nouns. Okay, they modify the noun. They they tell us something else. They give us extra inform information about that noun. Like uh, in this example, right? The first example, gato mimoso. Gato is the noun, and I'm getting more information about the cat. Like he's very friendly, he's very cute, he's very sweet, right? He's very cuddly, he's mimoso. Um, so that's what uh, adjectives do. They give us extra information. And you can see as well that these are words that they also change. They vary depending on the gender and the number. And they're um, uh, usually matching that uh, noun that they are describing. So now we are going with artículos. We are going to talk about artículos. So um, artículos are um, a very short set of words actually um, that we have in Spanish and they also go alongside with the noun before the noun. You know, in the case of adjectives, you can put them before or after. Um, and in the case of the article, they go before and they provide us also information about the noun. Not as much as the adjective, but they give us some little bit of extra subtle information. Like, for example, um, the gender, the number, or if it's something that we've been talking about and it's noun in the conversation, or if it's something that I'm not, that is in the terming, like I don't know much about it. Um, like here we have examples. El avión, the plane. Uh, so el, the, that's the article, okay? Avión is the noun. And it's, as I was saying, it's not the same. They do provide some information, right? It's not the same saying el avión as saying un avión, the plane versus a plane, right? There is a difference between those two. One is being specific. We've been talking about the plane. Um, what a plane is like any plane. <laughs> um, so they also provide some information. Um, so on screen we have el avión, una mascota, unos niños, las mujeres, lo bueno. So all of these words highlighted in black are eh, bold, actually, sorry, are articles, no? El, una, unos, las, lo, etc. So pronombres, pronouns. Um, pronouns are words that actually rep replace the nouns, okay? And the idea is to replace them so you don't repeat them and you're just referring back to that, you're referring to those nouns that you mentioned early and you just don't want to repeat the, the name over and over again. So here we have some examples. Él es alto. Estas eran nuevas. Me gustan las uvas. No lo vi. So él, estas, me y lo, these are all pronouns, right? And you can see they're replacing something else. So, él, eh, I'm talking about something eh, or someone that is eh, male and then it's tall, right? So, I'm saying he is tall. So, he can be a person, Carlos, Juan, whomever that we are talking about. And the pronoun is just replacing that. So pronouns are also words that variate, okay, depending on the gender and the number and the function that they uh, are doing in the, in the sentence, right? It's not the same thing having a pronoun for direct object or indirect object, okay? So the, the function also changes its shape.
Okay, so now we have verbos, verbs. So the verb is the most important word in a sentence in Spanish. It's, it, even if it's hidden, uh, it still it, it has a central role, like everything uh, turns around it. And uh, verbs are words that uh, change a lot in comparison with the rest of the uh, grammatical categories, verbs are the ones that have the most changes and that's why they have so much information. They tell you if a if um, um so I should tell you first that verbs are words that express an action or um, a, a state of being, right? And um, they provide you a lot of information about the action, right? Or that state of being. They, they would tell you if the action is in abstract and no one is actually doing that and it's just the idea of it or who is doing the action, if it's one person, if it's many people, if you're referring to the person that you're talking to or if you're talking about another group of people. Um, also the time, obviously, they, they talk, they tell you if the action was in the past, in the present, if it's going to happen in the future. They also inform you about the mental uh, state or, or the intention of sorts <laughs> of the person that is talking, right? If it's something that they perceive as objective or if it's their interpretation of the world, if, if it's their subjectivity or if they're trying to give you an order, if they're giving you an order. So as you can see, verbs have a lot of information and the classification of verb is extremely um, broad and, and, you know, it's very large as well in Spanish because verbs are just very complex. Um, so here on screen you have four examples. Bailar. So you can see bailar, which means to dance. It's um, an infinitive. It's basically just an, an action that is in abstract, okay? No one is doing the action there. El es de México. So bailar it's an action, it's dancing, correct? But then here I have he is from Mexico, es, is, is the verb, and then it's actually expressing a state of being, okay? Cantando, singing, that's a gerundio. Eh, nunca he visitado Rusia, he visitado, that's the verb, I've never been, I've never, I have never visited Russia. Um, so you can see here that the verb is actually two words and it's a, a, what we call a, com, a, a compuesto, like um, a two <laughs> words into one, right? Like a, a composed <laughs> a, a verb. So as you can see, verbs are very uh, flexible. They change a lot in Spanish. Okay, so now we move forward to adverbios. So what's an adverb? Okay, adverbs are kind of like adjectives in the sense that they provide you extra information, but it's never about a noun. It's only about another adverb or a verb or a, a, an adjective. And uh, one of the ways to distinguish these ones against uh, the adjective is that adverbs never change. They just don't change. They're, in, they're fixed, right? Um, so they provide you extra information about how something was done, when, in what fashion, okay? So here we have some examples. Es un proceso muy rápido. So it's a, it's a very quick process. So rápido is an adverb and muy is also an adverb that in this case is modifying rápido. So it's giving you more information. Like um, it's a quick process. It's a very quick process. Okay. María trabaja lejos. María works far away. Far away, lejos, in this case, is an adverb. Okay. It's modifying trabaja, the verb. It's telling you more information about how far away or where Maria works. Tu padre es trabajador. So your dad is a, it's a hardworking man. Okay, trabajador is an adjective. 
but I can expand that. I can emphasize how um, hardworking he is by saying very, no, muy. Muy is an adverb in this case. Tu padre es muy trabajador. Okay, we carry on to preposiciones, prepositions. So um, prepositions are very easy to identify because they're a set um, group of words in Spanish and um, they don't change and uh, they link words between them. They do have a little bit of information about, um, they carry a little bit of information, but it's very little. They, they don't give you much information if, if you just use a preposition, right? Is it like, like what I'm trying to say is it's the same thing in English. Um, it's not the same thing when you say the word of, right? Um, as if you say something else like, uh, I don't know, Spain like all the imaginary that comes to your brain when I say the word Spain in comparison with of. There is a little bit of information with the preposition of, but it's not much. So that's one of the characteristics about the prepositions, right? So here on screen we have examples. A, de, sobre. So you can see how they are linking words. Boy, I have the verb boy, and then Spain right? So the preposition is going to link these two and it's going to give me a direction. I'm going to Spain, voy a España. Um, la ciudad de las artes. De is linking city of arts, right? La ciudad de las artes. Está sobre la mesa. Sobre is also a preposition. Now we have conjunciones. So conjunciones are similar to prepositions in the sense that they don't have a lot of information again and they also link words. Um, but besides linking words, what they do is they link sentences in between, right? Um, so for, and, and they add some um, explanation to the way they, these words or uh, sentences are related, right? Is it gonna be addition? for example, or is it going to be a contrast of ideas or a conse consequence? Um, that's what the conjunctions do, like the um, conjunciones do in Spanish. So we have, for example, Maria Juan. I want to say um, these two people are together. I'm going to use a conjunción y. Maria y Juan. Um, then I have another example. Es de Canadá, pero habla español. So I'm saying he, he or she is from Canada. So I'm assuming that this person speaks English or French. But I'm going to say he's, he or she speaks Spanish. So the conjunction here is giving you an opposition, okay? So you might think that this person doesn't speak Spanish because he, he or she is from Canada, but he does. She does speak Spanish. Okay, the last one, interjecciones. So interjecciones, interjections, <laughs> um, are expressions of, um, they're like sounds. They're, they're in a way uh, sounds that we make to express um, how we feel or to uh, get someone's attention. Um, we have these ones in English as well, of course, like, hey, hooray, or like, hey, that, that sort of thing. That's an interjection, okay, that you're trying to get someone's attention or you're expressing how you're feeling. So here we have some examples in Spanish. Jupi, which means that, yay, you're excited, right? Ay, when you're in pain, ouch. That's what it means. Ay means ouch. If you're disgusted by something, you can say, puaj, ich right? That's what it means. And then if you forgot something, you can say, Uy. So, okay, so that, that's the, the sound of regret. So those are all the classifications that we have of eh, categorías gramaticales in Spanish. Bien, amigos, es el final de la clase. Muchas gracias por ver este video. It's the end of our lesson. Thank you so much for, for watching this video. I will see you in our next class. Adios.